I'm joined now from New Jersey by the famous Casey Coleman, a three-time trainer of a little brown jug winner and arguably the sport's greatest uh, harness racing female trainer so far. Would that be a fair uh, statement, uh, Casey? Yeah, I guess so. Let's say there's a lot of very good, uh, successful women trainers, but yeah, I've uh, I've won my fair share of races over the years. Uh, you were saying Linda Toscano does well, and also Nancy Tactor. Yeah, Nancy Tactor has been doing unbelievable right now. Uh, Linda Toscano does very well. Julie Miller does very well. Um, I know I'm forgetting a bunch right now, just off the top of my head. But there's uh, a lot of good female trainers out there that are competing very well with the boys. Uh, as a nation, we're very proud at the minute. A French trotter came to Ireland. Wasn't particularly good when the uh, mayor came. It was a mayor when she came in. A mayor called Eva Darpet, and uh, some Irish guys got her straightened out, got her balanced, got her improved, and they've sent her over to Nancy Tacker. And she recently went, I think, 152 or 153. A mayor called Eva Darpet. Have you seen her racing? Yeah, I think it was at Chester, right? I believe that horse was at Chester. And I actually just saw somebody post something on Facebook of that. And yeah, it looks like a very nice horse. I didn't realize that she come from over there. But. She went, she came to Paris Chester via Paris, via Dublin, then to Paris Chester. So she's very well traveled mare. No doubt. Yeah. So, well, look, as I say, Casey, thanks for joining us. Uh, as we speak, uh, the footage between myself and yourself will be beamed to a large screen in the infield or center of the track at Port Marnock on our great Irish American weekend. And uh, we'd like to thank you and the like of Bill Donovan and Hanover Shoe Farms for granting us these reduced uh, rate services to Betting Line, uh, Bill's Horse Cattle Wash and Heston Blue Chip. Thanks very much. Yeah, no problem. Uh, the only one I have something to do with there would be Betting Line. Uh, I'm part owner on Betting Line, but uh, it's very good of all those people to donate those breedings for you guys and hopefully they go well. Where does Betting Line normally serve as mares, uh, Casey? Uh, he's based out of Pennsylvania, PA, at Hanover Shoe Farms, and then he also transports semen over to Australia. Um, so he does double duty. He doesn't ship himself no more. He just uh, shuttles the semen. Mm -hmm. What age is the stallion now? Uh, you know what? I wish I should know this. I'm going to say he's around eight. I'm going to believe he's seven or eight right now. He's still a young horse. Still a young horse. Yeah, he's still very young. Yeah, he's on his fifth year is year five of breeding right now i believe well did you shuttle them down to australia at one stage for live coverings or was it always done by ai yes he shuttled down the first two seasons i believe it was and the only reason he didn't go the third season the farm we were shuttling with um last minute something happened and they decided that they were only they weren't going to handle stallions live on the farm they were just going to handle shuttled semen um so we kind of had no choice but to do it that way the way it happened was short notice and it went really well. He still had a lot of bookings and his semen was very fertile still with, uh, I think he was 80% fertile with the frozen ship. Um, so we've just been doing that since. It's easier on him. It's easier on Hanover Shoe Farms and uh, it's been a better way to do it for us right now. It's easier on the horse. Yeah, that, that, that's yeah it's much easier on him. He actually gets to have a half a season off now because they actually collect him during the breeding season for here. They collect him. So he actually gets the, the summer off now. And it has certainly changed the world, the emergence of this AI. What's that again, sorry? The emergence of artificial insemination has changed the world, hasn't it? Oh, definitely, yeah. Like I said, I was just speaking to you before the show, and it sounds like you guys are getting a lot of artificial being able to be sent over now, too. So it's definitely changed the game a lot for everybody all over the world. Yeah, there are guys in this company at the minute working with straws of sweet move. And I can't remember the name of the other top class stallion. It might come back to me, but there's some hell of a good bloodlines. Uh, some of the mares in Ireland now are carrying foals uh, by some top class stallions. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, talk about yourself. How did you get started in the sport, Casey? I was born and raised in it. My dad's Phil Coleman, my mom, Linda Coleman, and uh, my dad was born and raised in it, and I was born and raised in it. So uh, kind of had no choice but to be at the barn, and I just, I loved it. I, I did finish school. I finished grade 12. I didn't want to go on to college or nothing. I just wanted to train and drive horses, and uh, I've never had a different job. This is all I've ever done, so I'm glad I was able to do half decent at it because I don't know how to do anything else. <laughs> where, where was your home track? Uh, Fraser Downs. I was born and raised in uh, Surrey, BC. Um, so Fraser Downs, which is in Cloverdale, British Columbia, is my home track. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And who, 
who are the leading drivers up there when you were young? When I was young, uh, Billy Davis completely, they called him the dominator. He completely dominated. Um, I worked for him for a little while and nobody taught me more than him besides my dad, but uh, he, he taught me a lot. Um, Tim Brown, Dave Houdon, um, Jimmy Burke. There's a lot, a lot of good drivers back then. And I, uh, right now, maybe they're, they're different young guys, same as here in Ontario coming around now, but back then that's who was ruling. Well, is, is, is British Columbia, BC, is that class as the Canadian Maritimes? No, the Canadian, over. no, the Canadian Maritimes would be PEI. Um, that's like Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, Turo. That's the Maritimes. We're, we're way out west. We're, we're a long, long ways. I think it took us about three days in a truck and trailer when we came to Ontario to come from BC to Ontario. And then, uh, but yeah, it's not, not the Maritimes. I, I understand. It must be a pretty vast country. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You can drive from the northernmost point in Ireland to the southernmost point in about six, seven hours. Yeah, <laughs> that would be a lot better than here. It's uh, <laughs> a lot of, lot of traveling here. And let's say when I was home, we raced BC and Alberta. Alberta would be about 10 hours ship to Calgary and Edmonton. Um, but to come to Ontario, I'm pretty sure it took us three days. <laughs> so it's, it's a long ways. Well, you have an interesting connection with the sport down, uh, down under or down in New Zealand. Your husband's a New Zealander. Yeah, my husband, Mark Perla, he, uh, he's from, uh, I'm trying to remember the part of the spot in New Zealand he's from, um, Queen, Queens, no, not Queenstown, I actually can't remember, but anyways, we did go about four years ago on vacation, and we traveled all over New Zealand to different tracks, um, then we went to Australia and traveled a bunch of different tracks around there, um, we had a fantastic time, it's a whole different world, the way they, the way everything, the way they live, the way they train their horses, the way they race their horses, um, you've got standing starts, you've got two mile races, you've got, I don't even know how many horses were in some of those races, there was a lot of horses in a race, not like your usual 10, like here, it's, it's a whole different ball game there but it was really cool to see the different ways of training and driving and racing mm -hmm. interesting uh, uh different style of sulkies down there too yeah their sulkies to me look like our jog carts almost it's like uh they're 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 very long they're very wide and very long i'm not even sure why that is um but they're very very different than our our sulkies i've never been able to get a satisfactory answer why they're stuck to these long regal style sulkies and you know, uh, 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 in Ireland and America, we use a rotor style sulky or a cheetah. Yeah. It's strange why, why they stuck to those old, long, thin sulkies. Yeah, you know what? I, I meant to even ask and find out why that is, but to me, they literally look like job carts that they race in. So when, when you see those horses going some fast miles over there in New Zealand and Australia, you kind of got to remember they're they're almost hauling a job cart. <laughs> yeah. I've, often, I've often noticed that. But I have to tell you, your husband, you must have some Irish blood in there with a, a surname like Hurley. Yeah, I'm assuming I'm going to ask him when he gets home if he does. I'm assuming he does, but uh, yeah. definitely sounds that way. Coming back along the line. And you were telling me, uh, Casey, uh, your, what's your husband's first name again? Mark. Mark. Mark's a blacksmith or a farrier? Yeah, he's a blacksmith and uh, he's actually shoeing um, a lot of horses for Tony Longay right now, who's one of the leading trainers here in North America. So he's pretty excited about that. And he shoes all mine, obviously, and he's got other stables too. But Tony's by far, I believe Tony has about 130 horses and uh, Mark's shoeing quite a few of them. So he's, he's enjoying that right now. The horsemen watching this will want to know, do you get a just whip for being his wife? Oh yeah, of course. Oh, that's good. <laughs> That's good. Pa Patrick Kane Jr. will be, be keen to hear that. Well, uh, he, he, he's a leading driver over here and also a blacksmith. Well, listen, okay. uh, cur currently leading our driver's tab table by about five wins, uh, Patrick Kane Jr. from Trim. Well, listen, uh, let's talk a bit, a bit about some of the great champions you've had. Uh, you train sports writer. Now, sports writer is the sire of a good mare in Ireland called Oakwood Star Town. And Sports writer is also the sire of a Scottish horse called Rewrite History and a mare who's just been shipped to race in America called Rainbow Rider. Tell us a bit about Sports Rider. 
Okay. Um, Sports Rider was one of the first babies uh, I bought early on. Um, when I first started training babies, I bought him quite early on. And I paid $50,000 for him as two-year-old year. He only got beat once. He was 10 starts. He got beat once. And that, that defeat was a second. Um, he won the Metro. He won the North American Cup. He, uh, he was just a fantastic animal. He, um, I, I got very, very lucky to have purchased him. And to, he, he really helped strengthen my career the, after having him do what he did that made more owners come and more babies, more money to buy more babies. And he, he really changed my career a lot. Yeah, they were saying that John Campbell, success breeds success. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Would you say sports writer uh, shows early speed to your old? Yeah, definitely. His babies are very, very good at two, very fast at two. Um, he's a very, very good sire, but he hasn't had those top like open horses. Like he's known for sire stakes, very, very good top sire stake horse. He's always top three in the golds here in Ontario. Um, and it's almost impossible that his babies don't make it as two-year-olds. If they don't make it as two-year-olds, they're probably sore, sick, or something happened because um, they're very good early, which he was also. They're very good gated, very good attitudes. Um, he, he's been a fantastic sire. I've been very, very happy to see him do what he's done in the breeding shed. Mm -hmm. We had a nice horse over here in Ireland uh, a couple of years back. Unfortunately, he got injured, I think fatally injured, a nice horse called Monster Bebo. He was by American Ideal, another product of Casey Coma. Yeah, American. He was a special horse. That was uh, he was my first top stake horse for sure. He, I didn't buy him as a baby. He was sent him. He was sent to me as a late two year old by Mac Nickel. Um, he came from Alberta and he was unbelievable. Like the day that horse went in forty seven at Lexington Red Mouse at the world record that day, it was just uh, the whole paddock, the whole grandson was standing up cheering and just uh, he give you goosebumps that day. And the way he won the double heat in the Confederation Cup and a world record at nighttime racing, and uh, he's just. I wish he was staked to more. He wasn't staked to a lot of races, so we had to supplement that horse a lot. And he's my only stallion that didn't make it over a million dollars uh, lifetime. He was at like just under nine hundred thousand. Honestly, the horse would have two million dollars if he was staked to everything, but he just wasn't staked to a lot of the big dances. But he could fly. And as a daddy, um, I know his first year, I bought a horse named Idelic, who was a thirteen thousand dollar yearling buy, and she made me probably close to two million. So she that was his first crop of babies and he's been every year he's got champions out on the racetrack that, that was a nice return on your investment yeah yeah no doubt to move things up to the current day uh tell us about there's a horse racing you might be on the card this weekend a horse called bequest bequest belongs to bill donovan and he's by betting line um betting line must be close to your heart yeah, Betty Line, let's say he's been, I, I got him for 60000 at the yearling sale and he made 2.5, something like that. And now he's had uh, five full books of babies on the track and he racing him, he was just phenomenal. Like the way he, he only got beat his very first start as a three-year-old and uh, every other start he won as a three-year-old and he won it in dominating fashion. They just, they couldn't even touch him. He was, he'd come last quarters in 25 and four all the time, like it was nothing and very tough horse, very gritty horse horse and now his babies like they I, I realized everybody had very extremely high hopes on him as two-year-old year and some people kind of he, he kind of let them down a little bit because they expected more out of him saying that his stats really weren't terrible and I'm hearing really good things about his two-year-olds training this year and it's only his second year so I think and hope you'll see him have a big turnaround uh, in the next coming years as a stallion in the, in the breeding shed yeah sometimes it's your third or fourth crop before these horses really quick yeah, well, I look at his dad, um, Better's Delight. Better's Delight his first couple of years, people hated him. Like literally, he, they, they, you couldn't give a Better's Delight away. They didn't want him. And for whatever reason, now I think he's 25,000 for a stud fee for him. And he, and he's like 22 years old. So yeah. he's, uh, so I'm hoping that betting line follows his daddy a little bit. His first year might've not been the best, but it's early. He bred a lot of good mares. The babies look good. They're they're well gated. They've got good attitudes. Um, I, I see no reason why he's not going to come around and be a top sire. Just got to, some people jumped off the wagon soon on him. And I hope that they uh, regret that in the next coming years. Well, in Ireland, Casey, uh, a lot of our trainers still, still drive their own horses. But in the States, it's dominated by the catch driver. Uh, who drove sports driver for you mostly? 
sports writer was mostly Mark McDonald. He he drove him the I think he drove them all, but uh, actually he might have drove him every start. Brian Sears just qualified him once. I believe Mark drove him every start. So that was all Mark McDonald. And who drove him back and I dated for you? Uh, he was mainly Mark McDonald also. Mark drove him at all of our Canadian starts. And when we first went to the States, we did try, uh, George Brennan drove him a couple times. Um, Ronnie Pierce drove him a little bit. And then we, we swapped back to Mark McDonald. And Mark also was the main driver on him. The minister for state, George Brennan. He's been, yeah. to, he's been to Port Marnock. Yeah, George, he's a good guy. We've, we've had a lot of fun together, won a lot of races together. And he did drive American Ideal a little bit. Yeah. And who drove batting line for you? was Dave Miller. Um, as a two-year-old, Steve Condren, okay. drove, but uh, yeah, the buck guy, Dave Miller, drove him pretty much all of his starts as a three-year-old. And John, I got to give props to a, a kid named Jonathan Drew, a young kid from Canada. He actually, whenever the buck guy couldn't make it here, Jonathan always subbed in and drove him um, whenever I needed him to. And he, he never got beat on him. He did a fantastic job with the horse also. Also known as the Purple Jesus, is that the guy? Yeah, the Purple Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> I got a lot of luck with him. He's a good. Besides the fact, what a good driver he is. He's just a good guy. Like if you ever had a chance to meet him, he's a very good, down to earth guy, and uh, extremely good driver. I haven't had the pleasure yet. We've had uh, George Brennan over here. We've had Jordan Stratton. We've had yep. uh, oh Mike Wilder. We had uh, Aaron Merriman. People like that, you know, so okay. American sport has been good to us. Okay, yeah, no doubt. You would add some fun with some of those guys. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and uh, Dexter Dunn. Dexter Dunn mixed really well with the crowd, with the fans, as you call them. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Dexter Dunn just wanted to go for a beer with the guys. <laughs> yeah, right there. Well, tell us, interesting now, there's a big uh, rivalry coming up, hopefully this summer, in U.S. harness racing between a bucket bet Hanover, who's by your stallion, and a perfect sting. Uh, what happened? Have they met so far this year? Yeah, they met last week, and um, a, bu a buck of that did win. Um, he ended up cutting it out. Perfect Sting was in the two hole, I believe, um, and he ended up winning. They both raced fantastic, and Perfect Sting was his first start of the year, and a buck of that, I believe, had one or two starts under his belt. They're actually meeting again this Sunday. They're in at Chester and another Sire Stakes, and they're in the same race again together. I'm obviously cheering uh, a buck of bet. Not only is he a betting line, so I'm cheering for the betting lines, but my husband actually shoes him also. Uh, Mark uh, shoes that colt so we're cheering for him but uh joe joe holloway and dave miller are great guys and perfect sting is an unbelievably talented horse so it's uh it, it'll be a lot of fun watching them colts race but uh i gotta go towards a buck a bet being a betting line and 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 my husband shooing them where does southland gentry fit into the equation He's a very fast horse also. Uh, he hasn't met up. Um, I'm not sure. I know he hasn't met up with them this year yet. I'm sure he did last year at some point. This year he hasn't met up with them. He's in a different division, but uh, he's also an extremely fast horse. Um, from what I've seen, I believe the other two are better than him, but it's going to be a long summer and the summer's just started and the big dances haven't started yet. So uh, Southland Gentry, I'm, I'm not sure if he hardly got beat last year. He was a fantastic animal also. So you don't mind admitting your bias? What's that again? Don't mind admitting that you're biased. Yeah, yeah, no biased doubt. Towards, towards this bucket bet, Hanover. Yeah, I'm a little bit biased. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, you're, you're probably best known, uh, Casey, for training three winners of arguably the world's greatest pissing race, the Little Brown Jug. Yeah, the, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Actually, uh, my car, my license plate's three jugs, and some people, have, they're kind of wondering what that's supposed to mean. But uh, <laughs> as, uh, as a kid growing up, it was always my favorite race to watch. Like, it just, it's its a whole day to sit there and watch a great part of racing. And if you get to go to the track, there's like 50,000 people on, on track. Um, it's, it's a fantastic race. I know it's not the biggest purse I've ever won, but it's definitely the most fun race I've ever won. And um, I can't even decide what my favorite one would be. I guess I'd have to stick with the first one with Michael's power just because it was the first one. But uh, each one of them was uh, very, very special. It was Michael's power, Vegas vacation and betting line that we managed to get lucky enough to win them with. And uh, it's it's a lot of fun going to Delaware, Ohio. If any of you guys out there in Ireland never had the chance to be to Delaware, Ohio, I highly, highly recommend going the third week of September there and watching Little Brown Jug. Oh, it's on my bucket list, Casey. It's on my yeah. bucket list. Uh, you won't regret it something I'd love to do. I'd, I'd love to see the job. We see it every year here on television and it's a great atmosphere at the place. So, well, what about to our young people coming up through the sport? Uh, Casey, have you any words of advice? Like if I could sum up in three or four sentences, the best tip to a young caretaker or a guy 
who wants to become a driver, uh, what would you say, uh, sum it up a bit, what would you say, uh, uh, a, short, a short tip? A short tip? Uh, never look at a, you got you to gotta work hard. You got to be dedicated. You got to love the sport. You got to work hard um, and try not to get, uh, and me, myself, I'm bad at this. I get too down on the downs and up on the highs. When you have downs, you got to forget about it. You got to throw that bad race away or something that went bad with the horse, throw it away and keep moving on to the next best thing. Um, and if you're just starting, I highly recommend going to work in a big stable, like go work for a few different stables and go to the stables that you think are doing well and keep your mouth shut and your ears open and uh, learn taking as much information as you can saying that I always say don't be scared to ask a question I, I have a sign in my one in my barn it says uh, I can't remember exactly how it's worded but it says something like there's no such thing as a dumb question um, if you don't know something or you're curious I don't care how dumb it is ask and uh, every you got to pay attention to detail some people nowadays it's just some grooms are taking care of six seven eight horses just that there is a shortage of help and you can't pay attention to detail and to me, uh, that's not a good thing. So pay attention to details, work hard, and it's long hours, but if you love it and it's in, in your blood, you love it. In your own barn, uh, as an average, how many head of horses would a typical groom or caretaker look after? Can you manage one to three or one to four? Normally, I'm usually four. Um, usually, what I'd like to be at four. Now, right now, I have ten horses here in New Jersey, and they have we have they have five each. There's two caretakers. They got five each, and there's two trainers and me. So we have five of us taking care of ten horses. Um, I prefer it to be four. Once they have a top stake horse, they might have one horse. If it's a horse like say Betting Line or American Ideal, like horses that are on the road a lot, you might take care of just that one horse. Um, once you have a top horse, I like it only to be two or three maybe even one and four is normally my max but we are having a little bit of stat it's hard to get help right now and we right now my caretakers do have five each but uh it, we all pitch in and help them out the best we can and we're not scared to work long days uh, help help with horses throughout the world is a problem you know there's, there's less young people who want to get dirty fingernails or go home spelling the horse in your you know it's, it's hard to get help isn't it yeah, it's crazy. I, uh, let's say I, I used to have 130 horses at my highest and I'm so glad I don't got a big barn no more because I, uh, I pay well and I treat them well. And, uh, it's just, you just can't find people like there's just, uh, and with the pandemic, with how much money people are getting just from the government and that not having to go to work and stay safe. Um, a lot of people are doing that and it's just, uh, you just, it's very, very hard to find help nowadays. You could do worse on advertising some of the Irish websites because we're breeding some nice young people who are interested in harness racing and the industry here probably isn't big enough to su sustain them. You know, they would like to go abroad and broaden their experience. Okay, well, that's interesting. That's that's very interesting. And I, I've actually had a few people that are from down there that have worked for me in the past, but uh, Robert Cleary comes to mind. Uh, he's he's worked for me in the past. He, he's from there, correct? He is. You didn't do Robert yeah. You didn't do Robert Curry's career any harm, Casey. Yeah, he's, but I, I've had a few others too. I'm trying to remember their names, but he's one that definitely comes to mind. Um, but yeah, it, it, that'd be great if people are looking to come over. You'll definitely find a job. There's no doubt about that. You can pretty much pick the stable you want to go work for and they're hiring. Okay. Um, it's not the horse business here either. It's everywhere you go. You go to restaurants, you go in the malls, anywhere you go, those help wanted signs are out. And I'm telling you, it's the same. And I go to Florida, Canada, and right now, New Jersey everywhere is hiring so if you're looking to work it's not hard to find a job the great credit to robbie how his career has developed he comes from i think a little place called bally de hob uh, it's hard to pronounce bally de hob away down in west cork and for him to come from down there and finish up racing up in new york it, it's a credit to him yeah no doubt he's been doing very very well yeah he's, he's a nice fella we intend to interview him for this for this project that we're in but tell me uh not to be sexist, but I have to ask you, uh, you're a lady driver or a lady trainer. You were a lady driver. You're arguably the most successful female harness trainer in the world. And um, we are underrepresented. We have a bit of a dearth of lady drivers. At, at Port Marnock regularly, there's only three or four regular lady drivers, two, two sisters really, and another two sisters. Um, did, you, did you find it harder because you were a lady? Or is the American industry pretty open to both sexes? 
Yeah, no, I, I get asked that question a lot, nearly almost every interview. And honestly, I don't find it any different. Like I, I kind of hate it when people say I'm the top lady trainer at something. I want to be the top trainer at something. Um, I, I don't, the guys all, I used to drive too. I started off being a driver before I was a trainer and I never found it any harder being out there with the guys. Like you've got a few of them, obviously that kind of get a little bit lippy and get smirky with you but I grew up in the, with everybody like I was born and raised in the game I grew up with them from a kid and I was a tomboy I was also a tomboy and uh no I I never found it any harder at all being a female in the business it's just uh I'm just a, another trainer slash driver at the time trying to make it yeah there's, there's a top thoroughbred jockey over here at the moment called Rachel Blackmore who's taken the thoroughbred world by storm this season and uh he says exactly what you said she says i don't want to be known as the top female jockey i want to be known as the top jockey yeah yeah no doubt i totally agree with that it's uh i think the whole women and they're like i told you earlier there's a lot of top women coming in this game now like it's uh they're doing just as well as the males so it don't don't matter if you're male or female in this business yeah there's a lady down in australia too natalie rasmussen isn't it she, she does yeah that. Yeah, she actually, uh, she's an unbelievable tra well, trainer and driver. She trains with her. Uh, I'm not sure if her and Mark Purden are actually married or not. I, I'm not, I should know that because they're actually family. I think, uh, I think, I think they're Okay. Yeah. Um, Mark, uh, Mark Hurley, he, my husband, that's his uncle, Mark Purden's his uncle and he's with Natalie and yeah, she, she's won every race there is over there. It's crazy. I, I don't know if there's a race in Australia and New Zealand that she has not won and that's as a driver. And I just know that she works in the barn full time with Mark, um, training the horses in the morning. So yeah, she does extremely well. That's a small world, isn't it? Yeah. I'd like to give me a pot, a pot, a Parting message to the crowd at Port Monarch this weekend. Remember, we're on the big screen. Yeah, um, you guys have a great time and have a, sounds like a great race meet you guys are going to have there, a race weekend, and have a great time with that. If you're going to buy a yearling, buy a betting line yearling. Yeah, right? get on the betting lines. Betting lines, Sports Trader, American Ideals, Better Than Shatters. <laughs> hey, Casey, you're good at marketing. <laughs> Thank you very much. Casey Coleman, thanks for your time. No problem. Thanks for having me.